Hey, welcome back everybody. This week it will be Angie. Angie, the great song from the Rolling Stones in 1972 off of the Goat's Head Soup album. This is a super delicate acoustic piece. Very beautiful. And um, we're going to focus on Keith Richards' part, which is sort of the main one that you're hearing throughout the song, um, and talk about that fantastic intro. We'll go through that note for note. And then talk about some of the variations that he does, and I'll touch on some of the 12-string work that Mick Taylor does to complement that, too. All right, if you haven't already, please go down and click subscribe and ring the bell. It really helps the channel, and it lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments if there's a song that you'd like me to do in a lesson similar to this. Okay, so Angie, what a... Like I said, delicate is the word that comes to mind when I think about this. So apparently he wrote this when he was uh, coming out of one of his rehab sessions, coming off of withdrawals from, I think, heroin. And um, uh, the way he talks about it is, uh, you know, as soon as he sort of got feeling back in his fingers after three days of withdrawal, um, he had a guitar with him and this was the song that sort of came out. And he actually was writing it when his daughter was being born um, at, at that, I don't know if it's the same day or <laughs> right then. And his daughter was named Angela. So anyway, so this was, this was Angie. So interesting part about this is he's in standard tuning. Um, you know, when you think of Keith Richards and especially this era of the Rolling Stones and Keith Richards, you always think of the sort of five string open G tuning. This is six strings and it's standard tuning, straight up. Um, okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about the intro. Um, so the intro uh, comes off with a harmonic on the 12th fret on the A string. Just like that. So you're just touching your finger right at the fret line not in the middle of the fret. Remember on harmonics, you need to touch it right on the actual, above the actual metal fret. All right. Then we're gonna go into an A minor chord. You're gonna grab that third fret on the first string to make it an A minor seven for a second and pull out. So. Like that, right? Now here's the uh, beautiful part for me. Um, he goes to an E7, like it's, if you think of the chord, it's an E7 chord, but he doesn't play an E7 chord like that. No, no. Um, he'll pluck the open E note, and then he plays a part of a E7 chord up here on the third and fourth fret, um, like you can see over my shoulder. Right, so he lets that E note ring. And then he plays this. And then you're going to grab the fourth fret on the sixth string. I do a thumb over like that. You can also finger it like that. But either way, you're going to grab that fourth. It's still an E7. You're just grabbing that note, which is in the scale in the chord. And coming back to your piece on the front end. So all together. All right. So we're going to go G suspended. And then this is the this is the picking pattern for the final notes.
again. If you can get that G note in there, there real. But really, the important note that you want to get on that last is the move from to. And then we got to get back to the A minor. You're just going to grab the B note here on the A string, and the rest are open from fifth to second. Back to your A. All right, so going all the way around again. There you go. Beautiful. So delicate and beautiful. You know, the one thing I'm noticing is when you listen real close to the recording, he picks those strings. He seems to pick those strings very hard. Like, he's very deliberate. Uh, de deliberate. But it comes across still so dainty is too strong a word. Delicate is the word I keep coming back to, right? Right? All right, the next important part that happens is that main riff that you hear when he's singing Angie, right? It's based off of this A minor note, but it's sort of... More based off of, if you think of the A minor up here, this position A minor. Because what you're doing is you're going to grab first and second string on the fifth fret. Um, and you're also fretting your index finger on the third fret. Because you're going to sort of pull off a little bit from the fifth to the third. And then you're going to land on a C note, which is fifth fret on your third string. So, what do I mean? I mean this. It's sort of that. You're... I always thought it was, and it will sound great if you do that, but when you listen to the record, he is grabbing this, that note, and that note. I didn't realize he was grabbing that first string. Um, but land squarely on that C note. And then you go on from there. So that's really... That's the pattern um, for those verse sections. Um, he does a couple variations, um, but really, if you were to just do that every single time, it would sound epic. Um, there's a couple variations in a couple spots that he sort of does, and so if you want to sound just like the record, you want to sort of mix these in. Um, the first one is uh, when you're moving from the A minor, mm -hmm to the E7, right? So he doesn't always do the... In fact, I don't know if he actually ever comes back to that note. All the other times when I'm listening to it, it's hard to really hear that. What, you're, what he's really doing is... He's just playing on the front end. So any sort of variation you do on that part of the E7 chord there, is going to be closer to Keith, right? Um, so it could sound like this. Right? Or... All of that. All of that works and sounds fantastic. And he probably did every one of those. Um, and every other variation in between. So there's that part. Um, then there's the other variation where he slides into it, and he does that a couple times. So it sounds something like this. You know, he does that, that so that same shape here, you're just sliding down, you're starting it a fret down on two and three and you're sliding up into it, so. So that's in there. Um, there's a variation on the G sus that he does. Um, so the first one in the very intro is. Right? 
but you can hear a lot of times he's doing like he actually does that he actually gets all those notes in there and um doesn't actually matter you know i i would say it's keith richards He's not going to play it the same way twice. Most of the great players don't. Um, and uh, just experiment, like find those finger positions, and then you want to experiment a little bit based on once you're there. Um, and that's all he's doing. Then when he gets down to the F um, to resolve to the C, so on the, on the intro, he does the full on that we learn, but he doesn't do that one again in that same way ever. Um, most of the time he's doing some variation where he's just kind of sticking with the third and fourth string. Or something like that, but it's going off of that country feel. Not Just not that full and deliberate. So first time, And all the other times is pretty much or something to that effect. There's a there's a variation on this part, you know, when you're moving from your C to an A, um, the A minor turning around to the next verse, you know, you're not always doing, you're not doing that. Sometimes you're doing. Okay, so now on the section when he goes to the G and the full band's coming in, um, Mick Taylor's supporting him on 12 string. Um, he goes to this section. Right, that part. He doesn't play a normal G. He plays a G with a, I think that's a plus nine on top. You get this A note. And you can hear it very plainly if you listen to it. He's doing. sort of bouncing back and forth, but the primary voicing of that G has that A note in it. Now you can play that just with, you know, just by playing the lower four strings and just working off of the third fret and adding that A. Or if you want to get another note in there, you want to get a bass note, you can thumb over the third fret on your sixth string, kind of mute the fifth string. get a more full sound um, but either way that's the important part is this and then the rest of the chords are, are normal D minor A minor now he's gonna go C F and G and he's gonna keep his pinky on the third fret on the first string for your C and your F And then your G again with the A on top. And bounce, bounce back to the G within there. So. Right? So that's that was interesting. I didn't I haven't I didn't pick that out before when until I started listening um, today before the lesson. So the strumming pattern on that, I'm going to call it the G section. Um, it's that da na 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 na. So that's the that's the right hand part of how he's working that. The only other part left in the song is. You know, that one little part um, kind of towards the end where it bounces back between D minor and A minor. And that's just very vanilla. Um, there's nothing special about those chords or really how he's playing that there. So I'm going to assume you know what a D minor looks like. I'm going to assume you know what an A minor looks like. So that's all there is to that. And that's really all it is to all of Keith's parts. Um, but really, if you want to amaze your friends, what you want to really woodshed and spend your time on is that intro, you know? And I just 
played it a little bit wrong, but that's the part that, uh, that gets everybody. Okay, and finally, there's actually a 12 string that's also playing, um, played by Mick Taylor, that's accompanying Keith um, in the song. And um, to be quite honest, there's not a whole lot interesting happening there, but it's there. And you sort of miss it if you don't feel that 12 string too. Um, there's a couple of places where you can sort of hear it more plainly. Um, but he's just playing chords. He's not doing anything. There's no nothing really tricky or special that I can work out that he's doing. So, you know, when Keith's playing his sort of leadish rhythm stuff that he's doing out front. You know, Mick's just doing chords. He throws this in there. You know, it's that. That you can sort of plainly hear in there. He grabs that pretty much every time. And I just, you know, whichever way you want to move from that F to C. And he does that little pick down. Or. And on the G section, he's just playing normal chords. Keith's doing this stuff, so he's not. He's just playing regular chords. There's a little bit on his D minor to A minor part, you know, this one. At some point he goes up here. There's a little bit of that messing around going on, but Really, not a whole lot there. So just straight chords. You've got a second guitar player to play with, and he's got an acoustic 12-string. Say, just play the normal chord, dude. I'll play Keith's part. All right, well, that's it. That's Angie from the Rolling Stones. Great piece of delicate guitar work from Keith Richards. Um, and um, I'll just say I'm glad he came out of rehab that day, and I'm glad that this piece of inspiration hit him because it's very pretty piece of music to listen to and it's one of those songs that you know i thought i already i thought i knew it and actually assumed it was always in the keith richards sort of g tuning and it's not um and i sat down this morning to to really pick through it and and uh, get it together for the lesson and um i learned a whole bunch that i actually didn't know so i hope you also learned a whole bunch that was new and if you haven't already please go down and click subscribe and ring the bell it lets you know every single time I drop content, which I do every week. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this, and let me know if there's another song you want me to take on and do a lesson similar to this. I love those ideas. Keep them coming. Um, and until next week, take care, everybody.